Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome to the first episode of a new Let's Play for Jagged Alliance 2 with the 1.13 mod installed. I'm very excited to be playing this game, one of my all-time favorites. Jagged Alliance 2 came out in 1999, and I got it then. Like, I, I remember playing the original game as a teenager. Uh, years later, I would come back to it to discover that an amazing community had developed and continued to iterate on the game with a 1.13 mod, uh, which is kind of a nod to the fact that the final release of the game, uh, after all the patches, was version 1.12. Now, if you're thinking that a game from 1999 is old news, let me assure you that the mod has continued to add some crazy features over the years. Uh, one of the ones that got me the most excited is recently the ability to uh, do mortar strikes and call for fires from other sectors. As a former US Marine and someone with a primary MOS as a mortarman, I think that sounds freaking awesome and I am certainly looking forward to it. We've got a lot of ground to cover in this very first episode to get kind of all the story and uh, background information out of the way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get right to it. We're gonna be starting a new game. Uh, the difficulty level We've got four options here. Novice, Experienced, Expert, and Insane. Insane was added by the mod. Uh, originally, they were just kind of an easy, medium, and hard. Normally, I would play on Expert. I have played a Nightmare before. It is a nightmare. I think I've beaten it one time on that difficulty, and I've kind of never looked back. Uh, normally, I would play on Expert, but I think for the purposes of the Let's Play and to make sure that everything keeps moving at a fairly consistent pace, uh, we're going to go ahead and do this on Experienced. The other settings, I'm pretty okay with. Uh, we're gonna do the new skills, uh, sci-fi game style, which just adds a couple of side quests and one or two weapons, one or two, depending on how you look at it. Uh, one is fully automatic and the other is not. Uh, we're not gonna play on Iron Man just for technical reasons, you know, in case anything goes horribly wrong uh, that I don't lose out and that I can pause recording uh, in case I need to at any time and save and come back. Um, otherwise, tons of guns, definitely. We're gonna leave off, enemies drop all. Although, uh, again, I normally play with that on just because I find the degree of realism a little bit uh, more to my liking. Um, also, the food system I'm not familiar with and is off by default, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it that way. Similar to the um, inventory manipulation cost AP and the improved interrupt system, they start off, I'm gonna leave them off. Uh, I think I'm also going to go ahead and leave the defaults for everything else. So really no changes there. Um, the only other change that I've really made to the game, uh, we'll see whenever we get into the screen to hire our first group of mercs. Uh, other than that, I am going to shut up for a little bit and I'm going to let you guys get caught up on the backstory with the only uh, 3D kind of movie thing that's going to happen is an opening CGI sequence. Don't be turned off by 1999's version of 3D graphics. Please give it a chance. Uh, after we come back from it, we'll go over kind of what was being said there, and then we'll dive in to meeting our new mercenaries. All right, I'll see you guys on the other side. Approaching waypoint, Charlie. Left column, please advise. Firewood ready. Oh, 
I was happy to hear you have decided to take the assignment. No doubt your inquiries have shown that I, Enrico Chivaldori, speak the truth. In the past ten years, since killing my father and framing me, my wife has inflicted great suffering upon my people. Those that may be of value to her are imprisoned, beaten and tortured. The old, the sick, even infants with birth defects are removed swiftly from the population. Now it is time to remove her. I have brought the money you requested. It is everything I have. However, Arulco is full of gold and silver, and you might be able to convince the miners to help us in the struggle. There also exists a small but determined rebel movement. They are led by a man named Miguel Cordona. If you can locate Miguel, I have written a letter for you to give him. I believe he will accept you and prove to be an invaluable ally. I wish you luck, my friend. All right, guys, so what we just saw there was basically our player character um, being hired to help uh, someone by hiring more mercenaries and uh, coming in to help overthrow a violent dictator in his homeland. So this is sort of the, uh, the strategic element of the game. Uh, the idea here being, I guess, that we're a guy in just like a cafe with a laptop issuing these orders. Um, and we get the little Sir OS, uh, Sirtech being the original developer of the game. And we're able to do a lot of stuff from here. Uh, the actual combat and everything takes place in a different screen in a different setup. Uh, also, you may notice the resolution for this is very tiny. That will not persist to the majority of the gameplay that we're going to see. If we open up our email, we're going to find that we have some emails from Enrico, and that was the character that we were meeting uh, in the little cafe uh, kind of diner area. Basically, he contacts us, uh, Enrico Chivaldore, and we've already read these emails from him. So, like, we make some arrangements to meet with him, and then he ends up sending us uh, a report on just kind of intel. Uh, there's some attached files, they're now in the file area. We can gain a whole bunch of additional information about the country that we're going to be going into. I'm not going to go over this stuff. There's a lot to read here. Uh, it basically, the short version is that uh, Enrico married Didriana and then she sort of overthrew him and kicked him out of the country. And now we're being hired uh, by Enrico to come back and liberate his former homeland. So he's kind of the rightful ruler of this place. Uh, Didriana deposed him and we've been hired to come in and set right what once went wrong. Uh, I think that's really also a 90s reference, maybe a late 80s reference. Uh, additionally, we have one final email that we have not read yet from Psych Pro Inc. And what they are saying here is that they have this amazing psychological profiling test that they would like us to take. And uh, they're giving us a special offer, etc., etc. It gives us a secret activation code there. And that kind of gives us the first thing that, you know, maybe we might want to go do. If we head into our web links here, uh, one of them is going to be the Institute of Mercenary Profiling, where we can type in our handy dandy secret activation code that we've been given. And this pops us into a profiling system where we can create our own character. And for this Let's Play, I'm definitely thinking this is going to be divergent timeline me. You know, if. Uh, Things have gone a little bit different. If perhaps I had gotten out of the Marines and decided that I wanted to pursue a mercenary lifestyle, then this is maybe who I would have ended up becoming. Uh, so this, you may be chuckling to yourself, this is my real name. Uh, I freely give this out on the internet because, you know, good luck. Uh, I kind of have a superpower of anonymity there. But uh, if I had ever become a spy, it'd be perfect because you'd be looking over the list of my aliases and you'd never be able to tell which one was the real me. Um, for my nickname, we're gonna go with Coyote. Uh, I like that. Um, and I've already given a little bit of thought to our initial team and it's gonna fit in really well there. For our appearance, it's not gonna matter too much. This is gonna be a tiny little portrait of ourselves. Uh, honestly, like back in the military days, I probably looked more like this than anything. Time for the enemy to say its prayers. We have some inconveniences to dispose of. 
time to take out the trash. We have some inconveniences. And I think to maybe this of. is the closest. Uh, none of these are going to be spot on for my voice, obviously, but uh, you know, it's it's there. I like the, uh, uh, the the commentary style that he'll give us. And then um, I'm kind of fine with just the default skins. Uh, we'll go with normal body. Big body would make him like this huge bruiser of a character. Um, normal body, just kind of normal guy. We can swap out um, skin and pant color and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, maybe maybe we'll do a little bit of different shirt, like like that. I think I like that shirt better. Uh, and then hair color, I'm just I'm kind of brunette. We'll go with with that kind of uh, a color here. Uh, in the original game, one thing I'm sad that we're going to miss out on, one of the things that I always thought was hilarious when I played this the first time through, there was this like personality quiz in here with the weirdest questions and the strangest multiple choice answers that you could give, and it really did base your character on that. However, uh, as the mod has fleshed out the options that you can gain from that, eventually they had to kind of uh, ditch that multiple choice question and answer phase and just give you a straight up here select all these new options that we have uh, for our character traits you know i think i mean i'm kind of sociable i guess but uh gains no morale when other mercs uh when no other mercs are nearby that doesn't really fit too well so i'm probably just gonna go with neutral which is no benefits but no uh penalties and then uh same for disabilities i mean None of these really seem to apply. Some of them are really fun, by the way. But we're going to see lots of uh, crazy characters uh, during this game that are going to have some of these things. Like Psychotic uh, makes them use fully automatic weapons when uh, you don't necessarily tell them to. Uh, that one's always a little bit silly. And uh, a few of the characters are going to have that. All the rest of the stuff I'm not too concerned with. Uh, this is also new since the last time I played the game. I probably haven't started a new playthrough in maybe like two years, I think. Uh, I probably haven't played the game in about a year. So there are going to be plenty of changes that I'm not super familiar with, and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to replay it in the first place. Um, I'd say this seems fine, that I look average important, and uh, appearance is not important to me. Um, I'd actually say I have pretty good manners, but uh, I don't think I have the manners of a snob, so we'll go with average, and that... Uh, I, I don't really care about that. Uh, I am American, and I don't hate people of other origins. I'm not racist, and I'm not sexist. So uh, we'll go ahead and just leave it with all those defaults. Now, in our skill choices, what do I want to do here? Okay. Now, as I said earlier, uh, I was originally a mortarman, and I'm kind of excited about the idea that they brought in, like, a uh, a mortar system into this game and fleshed it out a lot more than what was in there in the original. There were mortars, but they were basically just rocket launchers that shot up instead of forward at first, uh, and that was about it. But I do want to go ahead and definitely pick up the heavy weapon skill, which is going to be uh, pretty much necessary to operate mortars, which makes a lot of sense. Um, trying to use a mortar system without any training, I mean, you're, you're just as likely to blow yourself up as get anywhere. Um, and then other than that, I'm thinking about Gunslinger, uh, which is just gonna give me a boost to pistols. Uh, I am actually a pretty competent pistol shooter. Um, and uh, I kind of like, the heavy weapons are gonna be a, a more of a late game skill. We're not gonna have a lot of explosives like right out the gate. Uh, whereas Gunslinger and all the bonuses to pistols, they're gonna be very important to us very early game. And so I think that'll be a nice complement for each other. Uh, we do, we basically have the ability to choose up to two of these major traits. And then on the next screen, we get minor traits. And we're only going to get, I think, yeah, only going to get one of them. Uh, you could get up to three minor traits. And, uh, but since we already chose two major traits, we, we don't get that option. And then as far as the major traits to choose, I actually think ambidextrous makes the most sense. Uh, I am left-handed. In the military, and even to this day, um, I'm actually a fairly competent uh, shooter in either hand. Most firearms, if they're not made fully ambidextrous, are a little bit easier to handle in your right hand. Uh, so that kind of compensates. And then I also have 
the interesting quirk of uh, being left hand dominant but right eye dominant. And if you are someone who hasn't had a lot of experience with shooting firearms and don't know what that means, when you just look at something initially, you know, your, your eyes are set apart from each other to give you depth perception. One of them looks straight on and the other one is looking at an angle to apply the depth. Now, most people uh, would be the same hand and eye dominant, which would mean that if they were uh, shooting a handgun, for example, with their right hand, they would be looking down the sights with their right eye. Now, naturally, I don't do that. I have a cross dominance with my hand and eye. Um, now, that may sound like it's a bad thing, but in my experience, it actually makes shooting offhand fairly easy because uh, shooting in my right hand kind of came naturally at that point. Uh, shooting in my left hand doesn't take much else. Uh, if anything, like I would just wink for a split second and it causes your eyes to sort of automatically adjust when you close the other one and uh, that would do it. So I have actually a fair amount of experience shooting in both hands and uh, I think that's gonna be kind of cool. We can do some uh, John Woo akimbo shooting style with, uh, with pistols without too much trouble. Uh, we've also gained uh, a new thing added in the mod were imp backgrounds, which are basically just a bonus uh, set of traits. Like as an example, you were formerly a bodyguard, uh, you gained some strength, uh, less AP needed to access your inventory, physical resistance, and melee damage. Former SWAT, you can read that for yourself. Uh, basically, just a set of mostly advantages and sometimes disadvantages uh, for certain actions depending on where your background is coming from. Now, one of the backgrounds here is veteran, and that seems good, right? Like, uh, marksmanship stat goes up, uh, action points on first turn when assaulting a sector is slightly higher, travel speed on foot is slightly higher, uh, your resistance to being suppressed by enemy fire is higher, and you can run slightly faster. I, uh, I like that quite a bit. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, yep, there is another veteran that has some different abilities, a leadership stat, fear resistance, suppression resistance, but uh, runs slower and costs more, or sorry, uh, that's a that's less cost, okay. So buying insurance on them, like life insurance costs less. Eh, it is not really the coolest of abilities. I think I'm gonna go with that first set of veteran traits if I can find it again. Okay, let's start from the beginning, scroll back through, and there we go. All right, I'm pretty okay with that. And then we get to go actually choose the attributes in the game. Um, a lot of complexity going on here. Uh, if you've never played before and you'd like to be playing along, the one truth that is always going to apply, max out your wisdom. Uh, it affects how quickly you learn abilities, which is going to be super important for you, and there's no reason not to start it at 85. Um, dexterity, like manual dexterity, your ability to sort of manipulate things, uh, you can do to like 65. Agility, I feel like is usually far more important and affects um, how agile you are, generally how well you move around, uh, also has a fairly large uh, influence on your action points per turn, which are gonna be huge. I wish in this screen it gave you a little, like, you know, hover text or something uh, to give you some idea of what all this affected, but unfortunately it does not. You just have to do the research to figure it out. Um, strength isn't going to be a huge trait for us. Again, we're gonna max out wisdom. Um, leadership, I guess we can do, leadership's gonna be a dump stat if we, we need to get rid of something. Uh, we're going to take marksmanship up to, say, 70. Uh, explosives can't go down any further due to the fact that we have ex uh, heavy weapons as a trait. Um, and then for everything else, uh, 35 medical. Uh, I actually did have an EMT license. The, the Marine Corps was kind enough to detach me uh, to go to college for a while um, in order to get an EMT license when I was in California. That was something uh, several units did prior to deployment to Iraq in which we needed more medical personnel. And so uh, I do have a fairly good grasp of emergency medicine. Uh, so that makes sense. 
And mechanical, I think, is also going to stay up there. In this game, mechanical basically impacts uh, how well you can maintain and repair your own weapons. And is just any former service member that spent a lot of time with their firearm and taking care of it. Uh, I think that's something that I could justify the ability to clear a jam. Um, we do have five more points left over. So with those five more, uh, let's just go ahead and let's give it some silly, like, not round numbers. And we'll do something like that. Also, go ahead and I'm going to pop him up to a uh, starting level of two, uh, which took uh, ten points and just kind of affects like how stressed out we get and a number of other uh, dice rolls that are happening behind the scenes. We'll go ahead and finish that up and uh, then I'm pretty happy with all that. We'll go ahead and authorize the $3,000 spent and uh, I will be our first man on the battlefield. Now, in addition to myself, we're also gonna head here to the Association of International Mercenaries where we're gonna end up recruiting a crazy little band of people. Uh, one of my favorite things about this game has and continues to always be the personalities of the mercenaries that are available here. We're going to go and arrange them by price, and that is the order I want them in. Um, just so all the real cheap guys are up at the top, we don't have a ton of money uh, right now to be worried about all that. Uh, one of the things that is available in the mod and that I did do is uh, I changed it initially. Um, you know, we're not the only mercenary on the block basically and uh, these guys can be hired out by others at the start of the game a lot of them would be on other missions i turned that off just so i could be insured to sort of get the the people that i wanted right off the bat and one of the reasons that uh when i was creating my own character i said that his code name uh, or call sign of coyote would make more sense is i'm gonna go ahead and recruit grizzly here uh grizzly it's this loadout. Uh, let's take a quick look at him, basically. Uh, he's got very high health, very high strength. He's also level two. His marksmanship's not bad. You know, his other stuff is just kind of rounding him out uh, a little bit. Basically, he's this huge hulking uh, kind of guy. Grizzly is totally an appropriate code name for him. Um, something the uh, 1.13 mod added is, uh, and it added recently. I remember playing for a long time without this. We now have different. Uh, Equipment choices down at the bottom, like standard, hand-to-hand, -hand, gun choice, load-bearing equipment, and premium. Um, so we can get like that. Okay. Wow, that's very premium. I think I'm just going to stick with the standard choices for now. He's going to come in with a Desert Eagle 357, uh, which is going to be fine. It's going to hit very hard. We're going to have trouble finding ammo for it right in the beginning, but uh, that's not going to be too bad. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> well, Steve, I would like you to come along with me. We're going to go ahead and choose to buy his equipment along with him. And uh, to start out with, we're just going to do uh, one week. Just so we make sure we have enough funds for everybody that we're going to grab here. It's going to tell us that he should show up in Omerta on day one at 7 a.m. Now, in addition to Grizzly, uh, we are also going to grab Bull, who similarly uh, is a giant of a man uh, with a ton of health and a ton of strength and decent enough marksmanship. Everything else is kind of meh. But uh, ooh, I like that. We could start him off with a shotgun, which is a heck of a lot better than the revolver he would normally start with. Or his premium loadout with a Thompson M1A1 submachine gun. I kind of like the uh, the shotgun. Um, again, ammo is going to be hard to come by right at the beginning. But uh, we're going to pick up a pistol, like, right away without too much trouble. So I'm not too worried about that. And yes. we'll go ahead and give John Bull Peters a call as well. And we're going to do something similar. Uh, one week hire I'll be there. with his equipment. And he will also be there at 7 a.m. Go ahead and back out of that. And then Fox, again, we're following our animal theme here. She, all right, is going with pistols kind of no matter what. Paramedic sort of downgrades her as is combat. Okay, I think it's going to come down to standard or field medic. Um, that is 2000. That is actually only 1800. Why is that cheaper? Um, oh, I guess just the 
uh, the Makarov PMMs. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, we'll go with her standard loadout. Um, so taking a look at Cynthia Fox Guzman here. Uh, she has a ton of dexterity and uh, decent agility, also level 2. Her marksmanship's okay. That's got to be an in-joke. Uh, her marksmanship is 69. And, uh, yeah, it'll make sense as the game goes on. Uh, also, the main reason that we're picking her up, her medical is 70. So uh, she makes a pretty decent team doctor right out the gate. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pick up Fox. The fox is listening. Yeah, she is. All right. Okay, I imagine you'll want to get maximum value and go long term. Again, we're going to be buying equipment and for one week. This I'll out get of my 14, things together and I'll be there as soon as possible. All right. And I think that's going to do it. Um, a nice four man team right out the gate should be totally fine. We're not really going to need any explosives or anything like that right in the beginning. Uh, there are some other characters I wouldn't mind grabbing, like Wolf here uh, makes a really nice compliment to our party, but he's just a little bit more expensive than I want to get into right now. Um, you'd see if uh, if I tried to recruit him... Wolf here. What kind of time frame do you have in mind? I could barely do it. Oh man, do I want to barely do it? I don't. I need that uh, extra money left over Nobody in case does like I do. we uh, start running up against our uh, our one week and we need to uh, extend some guys for a couple of days. I need that extra cash kind of laying around. But eventually, Wolf is going to be joining us. He's a, a level 3 mercenary. He's just a little bit better than what we have the money for right now. All right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and shut down our laptop which is going to take us into this view. We've got these characters in transit right now. They're heading into Omerta to touch down. And that is going to be where our first combat takes place. But I think we're going to go ahead and end this episode here. It makes a nice introductory pause. We've seen what our first team is going to look like. And as soon as we start off the next episode, it is going to be action-packed. And then there's going to be some plot dumping to do. So uh, that'll probably be plenty full on its own. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know it's going to be a little bit slow here in the beginning. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of uh, you know story background stuff to take care of before it really gets into uh, the constant tactic stuff that's going on. we got to get the RPG elements out of the way. Uh, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it and are excited about this as I am. And if you are, feel free to subscribe to see more videos every single day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes. And I will catch you guys next time.